Jesus said in John 15, 12 through 14, My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. Hello everyone, this is Monica Dennington, and today we're going to examine the question, can you afford to be a Christian? Now most of us are aware that in order for us to be saved from our sins and to be given eternal life, a price had to be paid in order to wipe out the debt of our sin, the guilt that we had before God. Jesus Christ paid that debt through his death so that we may live. He took our place on the cross so that God's wrath would not fall upon us and so that we could be given eternal life. And we are aware of that fact that there was a cost involved, a very dear price that had to be paid in order for us to become a part of the kingdom of God. But what we're going to look at today is some scripture that lets us know that there is also a cost to the disciple. If you want to be a Christian, whether you are right now or not, if you want to be a Christian, you have to understand that not only was there a price for God to pay in order for us to come into his kingdom, but according to scripture, there is also a price that we have to pay. And we're going to look at that right now in Luke chapter 14. Large crowds were traveling with Jesus and turning to them, he said, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, his wife and children, his brothers and sisters, Yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. And anyone who does not carry his cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Will he not first sit down and estimate the cost to see if he has enough money to complete it? For if he lays the foundation and is not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule him, saying, This fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Or suppose a king is about to go out to war against another king. Will he not first sit down and consider whether he is able with 10,000 men to oppose the one coming against him with 20,000? If he is not able, he will send a delegation while the other is still a long way off and will ask for terms of peace. In the same way, any of you who does not give up everything he has cannot be my disciple. So this scripture makes it very clear that not only is there a price for God to pay in order for us to become disciples of Jesus Christ, but that there will also be a price or cost that we have to pay in order to be disciples. Now, how does that work with the fact that we are not saved by our works, but we are saved by grace? Well, if we go to scripture, scripture, then God is going to show us exactly how those things work together. Because indeed, scripture does say very clearly that we are not saved by our righteous acts or by our works, but we are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. And that our righteousness, no matter how many good deeds we do, that it's just like filthy rags before God, and that we could never pay the debt of our own sin. That's very clear in scripture. And this is what I want you to ask yourself today. Are you you ready to talk about more than just how can I get into heaven? Are you ready to talk about how you can love God, how you can enter into this relationship so that it's no longer just this one way God pouring out his love upon you, but that you enter into a relationship with him where you are also participating in the relationship and loving him in return. And that is what we're talking about today. In order to be part of the kingdom of heaven, you do have to follow the greatest commandment, brothers and sisters. And that is very simply, you've got to love God and you've got to love your neighbor. Are you ready to start talking about love? Because brothers and sisters, in order for you to love God, 
there is going to be a cost involved. Now, in order to understand how these two things work together, the price that God pays in order for us to be saved and the price that we pay in order to be a disciple, we're going to look at this beautiful parable that Jesus showed to us. And this is in Matthew chapter 13. And this is going to reveal to us God's character and the character of the love of of God. Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. Now in this parable, we have a few components that we need to recognize. First of all, it's talking about the kingdom of heaven and it's likening it to a treasure. So we're talking about something of great value, all right? And we're also talking about a field, all right? And we also need to understand that some translations say that the treasure was buried in a field and then when the man found it, he buried it again and then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field, okay? So we see these components and in order to understand the meaning of these symbols, we need to go to Jesus' words and allow him to define these symbols. We have to remember that we don't have the right to assign the meaning to the symbols ourselves. We have to look to Jesus' words into the word of God to find out what the key to the parable is. So we're going to go back to a parable that Jesus told earlier in this same chapter. Um, and actually, I'm just going to go straight to the explanation of the parable of the weeds, because in this, he tells us the definition of some of these symbols. And he says, the one who sowed the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world and the good seed stands for the sons of the kingdom. So what we see in this parable is um, a man who is sowing seed in a field. The field represents the world, and the thing that is being sowed is the, the sons of the kingdom of God. Okay, so we see a picture of God taking the sons of the kingdom of God and burying them in the world, burying them in the ground so that they would produce a harvest. Now, this is a principle that we see over and over in God's character. It is the principle of the seed. Jesus tells us that unless a seed falls into the ground and dies, then it remains alone. But if it falls into the ground and dies, then it produces a harvest. So we see in this parable that Jesus is likening that seed to the sons of the kingdom. That would be you and I, the sons and daughters of the kingdom of God. So we see that these two parables are really giving us uh, two pictures of really the same thing. We see God or Jesus, the son of man, taking this thing of great value, which is the sons and the daughters of the kingdom, the good seed or the treasure and burying it in the field, which is the world. So now with that understanding, let's read it again. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again. And then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. Okay, so now we can understand that this is talking about God finding the treasure of the sons and the daughters of the kingdom. Okay, many times we read this and we assume that it's us finding the gospel. But if we allow Jesus to define his own symbols, we see that he's telling us something very important. He's actually telling us something very interesting about God's character and the way that God expresses love. Okay, and this is also going to give us really an overview of how the entire kingdom of God works. Okay, this is what God does. He sets his sight upon something that he values greatly, someone that he loves, okay? And when he does that, he looks around, he finds the most valuable thing that he has, and then he proceeds to sacrifice the most valuable thing that he has in order to gain the thing that he loves, okay? Now we see this in the fact that he took his only begotten son, as it says in John 3, 16, that God so loves the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. He took everything that he had, 
his son, his only begotten son, that was everything that he had. And he laid it down and sacrificed it in order to buy the field or the world in which the treasure was was hidden. And this is consistent with scripture because it tells us that Jesus was the propitiation not only for our sins, but for the sins of the whole world. So we see this picture that God is giving us that he gave, he sacrificed everything he had, his one and only son in order to redeem not just the treasure hidden in the field, okay, but the entire field, the world. Now this is a great revelation about God's character, brothers and sisters, when you understand that the way that God expresses love is to take his most valuable possession and lay it down for that thing that he loves, you are also going to understand then the next part of the parable, and that is this. He treasured that treasure, the sons and daughters of the kingdom, so much that he gave everything he had for it. But he not only loved the treasure, he loved the field, you guys. The Bible says that he so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. The field is the world, all right? So he loved, he treasured those sons and daughters of the kingdom, but he loved the world, okay? He loved them. And so what does he do for that thing that he loves, that field, that world that he loves so much? He takes the sons and daughters of the kingdom, that treasure, and he buries it in the ground. Just like the parable of the weeds, it says that the good seed, which was put into the ground to die so that there could be a harvest, was the sons and daughters of the kingdom. This is what God wants you to see, brothers and sisters, that it doesn't just stop with God's love that the kingdom of God is spread to us, we become part of that love, we become part of that relationship and the fellowship that Jesus and the Father have, and then we join him in his work. And the way that we join him is the same way that Jesus joined the Father. We submit to God's will when God says to us this thing. He says, you are my most valuable possession. You are everything that I have. And I love these people over here and they're lost. It's the world. And it is my will to take you and to sacrifice your life, to lay down your life so that they can learn what my love is. Because when you submit to my will and lay down your life for their sake, they will see my love and then they will also be brought into our love and they will become a part of this kingdom. They too can become sons and daughters of the kingdom of God. And brothers and sisters, you have to understand that when Jesus says that the only way that a seed can become a harvest is for it to, to fall into the ground and die, that means that there is a cost that is going to be involved. And that price that is paid is not only paid by God, it is paid by the disciple, the one who submits his will to God and says, yes, God, my life is now available for you to plant in the ground, to sow as a seed. I am a living sacrifice and I am willing to lay down my hopes, my dreams, my relationships, everything that I wanted to have out of this life. That is why he says in Luke chapter 14, that if anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, his wife and his children and his brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. And anyone who does not carry his cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. He's not saying this because he wants us to hate the people, our mothers and brothers and sisters, because scripture says very clearly that anyone who hates his brother doesn't have eternal life in him. He's a murderer, okay? But what he's saying to us is that we have to hate our own life and we have to be willing to pay the price no matter what it is, even if it means that it's gonna cost us our dearest relationships in life. We have to be willing to pick up that cross and follow Jesus. It says anyone who won't do this is not worthy of me. He cannot be my disciple. You see, in order to be part of this kingdom, you guys, we have to follow 
Jesus. See, brothers and sisters, this isn't a matter of paying for your own sins. That is a work that Jesus did. This is a matter of joining Jesus in his work, of joining in the fellowship that the Father and Jesus have and becoming his fellow workers. Because there is something that God is building here, you guys. It is called the kingdom of God, God's temple, God's building. And that is the sons and the daughters of the kingdom. Okay, and when we partake of the love of Jesus Christ, that love is then born in us and our desire is to edify the body of Christ or to build that building that will glorify God. So let's go back to Luke chapter 14. It says, suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Will he not first sit down and estimate the cost to see if he has enough money to complete it? For if he lays the foundation and is not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule him, saying, this fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Okay, what is this talking about? Well, it says in Scripture, for we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field, God's building. Okay, so we're talking about building God's building or God's temple. We're joining in God's work. However, if we start this thing, okay, we start out with the foundation. We go ahead and build that foundation. And scripture is clear that there's only one foundation, and that is Jesus Christ, okay? So we lay this foundation. We do this in front of everyone, right? We say, okay, I'm saved. I'm a Christian. I'm doing this thing. I'm going down this path and I'm going to help God build his building now. I'm going to help God build his kingdom. We're going to build this tower. Understand that before you start building, you better sit down and understand what it means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ and what it means to become his fellow worker. Because if you don't have enough money to finish the job, then you are not going to bring glory to God, but you are going to bring ridicule and shame upon the kingdom of God because everybody's going to look and say, oh yeah, well they started, they proclaimed themselves to be a Christian. They said that they were going to build this kingdom, but look, they couldn't finish it. Can you afford to be a disciple of Jesus Christ? What is it going to cost you? And do you have what it takes this scripture makes it very clear what it's going to cost, brothers and sisters. It says, in the same way, any of you who does not give up everything he has cannot be my disciple. The cost is everything you have. Just as we saw in the parable of the treasure hidden in the field. What did Jesus pay? What price did he pay for you? He paid everything he had. And what does he expect you to do in turn? He expects you to take everything that you have and lay it down in order to express your love for God and for God's kingdom. And this is what God is saying to you today, brothers and sisters. If you think you're building God's kingdom right now, you're building your, your buildings, you're building your churches, your Sunday school programs, you're building your missions programs, you're building all these things for God, you're going to build this tower and you're, you're going to glorify God, right? Listen, here's what God says. If you are not willing to give everything you personally have in order to build that building, then you're not going to be able to afford to finish what you started. And the result of that is not that God gets any glory. The result of that is that the world looks and says, yeah, he started with Jesus, but he didn't finish this. He didn't finish this thing he started because he couldn't afford it. And he couldn't afford it because you weren't willing to go all the way. Okay? There is nobody on the face of the planet that is disqualified from following Jesus Christ who is willing to give everything they have. Okay? Even the widow who only had one little tiny mite to give God, she was willing to trust in God and give everything that she had. And Jesus said she gave more than all of the Pharisees who gave all of this money. He was more impressed with her sacrifice. So the poor are not excluded, the weak are not excluded, but you will be excluded from being a disciple if you are holding back something for yourself. And this is what it's talking about in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. It says, by the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as an expert builder and someone else is building on it. But each one should be careful how he builds. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. If any man builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, his work will be shown for what it is. Because the day 
will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each man's work. If what he has built survives, he will receive his reward. If it is burned up, he will suffer loss. He himself will be saved, but only as one escaping through the flames. So you see, this is what God is showing us today, that there is a cost involved if we want to join God in his work, if we want to be a disciple, God's fellow worker, then Jesus Christ is the foundation. And we have to be careful that when we build, we build with costly stones, gold, silver, things that will last when tested by fire. And we have to be sure that going into this thing, we understand that the cost is not just a little. The cost is not just some wood and hay and straw and sticks that we had left over and we can put them together and make a kingdom for God. No, you guys. God deserves everything you have. This is what it costs to be a disciple, brothers and sisters, because this is what it costs in order to show someone else love. You see, brothers and sisters, when God sacrifices his most valuable possession for someone else, what he is doing is giving that person value. Just like in that parable, when he sells everything that he has to buy that pearl of great price or to buy that field where he has that treasure hidden, what he shows is that he treasures that pearl, that treasure, those sons and daughters of the kingdom more than anything else. He gives them value by what he is willing to give up for them. And what God is wanting to see, what he is seeking as he looks and he says, will I find faith in the earth? When I return, will I find faith? What he is looking for is a son or a daughter who is willing to make the same sacrifice for him. So count the cost and ask yourself, can you afford to be a Christian? Can you really afford to be his disciple? Do you love him so much as he loved you, that you are willing to take everything that you have and lay it down for his sake? I would encourage you to ask yourself these questions today. And if you find that you are lacking in courage, if you find that you want to love God and you want to know the love of God and that you really want to be a disciple but you're afraid to lay your life down, don't be discouraged because the Bible says that in our weakness, God's strength is made perfect. He's not looking for heroes and, and strong men that are full of bravado. He is looking for weak and humble servants who are willing to submit their will to him and then to trust in God's strength and God's love to be born in our hearts. Okay, when you ask God to give you the strength and the courage to give your life away, he will meet you there and he will give you what you need in order to do that. You will be able to afford to be a disciple. And I want to encourage you to make that decision today. It's easy to say that we have salvation. It's easy to say that Jesus Christ is our foundation. It is even easy to say that we love God. Words are cheap, brothers and sisters, but love is expensive and it's expensive for a reason because there is nothing in all of the world that is more valuable than the love that we have with God and with the people of God. As scripture says, many waters cannot quench love. Rivers cannot wash it away. If one were to give all the wealth of his house for love, it would be utterly scorned. Until I see you next time, be blessed.
DivineOward.tv is committed to providing the Word of God free of charge to our viewers. If God is calling you to join us in His service by making a financial donation to this ministry, you can do so at www.thefinalword.tv.